Hello everyone. Welcome to the second video lecture in this unit on display systems. Um, in this section we're going to kind of wrap up the unit um, looking at uh, the bus systems as well as some of the other things that we can do with our displays now. Um, that's once again as I've kind of learned in the first part of this video lecture series you know displays have really uh, come into their own and, and are providing a very vital part to our precision ag um, technology that's being incorporated into a typical farming operation. So, so we'll kind of see how that advances. So, so we're going to kind of start with the bus systems and this is kind of where um, how the displays have really started coming into their own and, and, and because of their importance we've seen that and that's all due to the, what we call the bus systems. So to kind of get into that, um, bus systems um it's nothing like i don't think of like a school bus or a motor coach type thing um here bus systems bus is a it's an acronym that stands for binary unit system and for me as a computer geek i totally get this i know what it is but i know most of you probably don't know what it is you can google and search it out um, and find more information but basically what the binary unit system is or the bus side of things um in essence it's a communications protocol and basically what that does is um, it it'll, tells us how devices can communicate with each other. So it's with a display, when I plug it into something, it's going to be able to communicate with whatever I plug into it. So that is kind of what it is. Um, probably the best way to put it into layman's terms, it's like plug and play. Um, we've seen this in computers where you, you plug in a mouse and the computer goes, oh, it's a mouse I, and this is how it's going to work or um, any other type of device printer or a scanner um, back in the day you had to program those in or you can only plug them in certain ways um, and configure it you know and now um, it's it's turned into plug and play this is the same thing that we see with the display systems display systems where I plug that display in and it's gonna go oh I'm connected in a combine that's what it is and as soon as you take it out you plug it into your tractor and it recognizes oh there's a planter behind me so that's what bus systems are. Um, when we see it in the precision ag side of things, there's actually two types of, of bus systems. Um, there is CAN bus, and the other one is what we call, uh, refer to as ISO bus, and we'll take a look at each one of these in a little bit more detail. So CAN bus, um, CAN stands for Controller Area Network, and once again, as a computer geek, I totally get this stuff and I know it. Um, some of you probably don't have no clue what this is, um, but basically what a CAN bus is, is this is just where it's a single manufacturer. So take a company like John Deere or Trimble or Raven, and basically that single manufacturer, they're communicates, communicating with devices of their, of their own, from their own side of things, from their own company. So here's a good example. If I have an Ag Leader display, kind of like what you see here on the screen, um, I take it in and I connect it in my combine and it has an Ag Leader monitoring system. And as soon as I plug it into that Ag Leader monitoring system, it's going to go, oh, it's an Ag Leader yield monitoring system. Um, if I was to take this and somehow try and plug it into a John Deere yield monitoring system, I can't do that because the cables don't match up. But even if I could match up the cables, it's not probably uh, not going to determine that it's a yield monitoring system of any type. It's not going to be able because they're going to communicate on different languages. So, Ag Leader display, take it into my combine, goes in and goes, oh, it's a yield monitoring system. I take that display out and I go plug it into my sprayer. Um, and it goes, oh, it's there's a spray system attached. Let's go into spraying mode. So, uh, what rate do you want to apply or what's your mixture? Um, and then I put it into a planter, that same display, and it's going to go, oh, there's a planter. Um, seed monitoring system. Here's how I'm going to function. Here's how I'm going to operate. Here's the information I'm going to store. So here's kind of we'll break it down into a nice little graphical representation. So here's a yield monitoring system. And let's just say CAN bus doesn't exist. So there is no such thing as a CAN bus. When a yield monitoring system, the five things that you see on the screen, these are the basic five things that I need in order for a combine to record yield. Got to have a display to tell me what's to show the information. Got to have a GPS in the upper right hand corner that's going to restore, you know, record my location. And along the bottom, uh, the bottom left is a switch. That's just basically when the head goes down, 
that's the sign of the system of, oh, it's time to start um, recording um, corn coming into the combine. Um, next to that, the green one, that's our moisture sensor. So as the grain is coming through the combine, that is what's recording our moisture and telling us how much, what is the moisture content of the grain coming through. And then our red device over there in the bottom right hand corner, that's our flow sensor. That's recording how much grain is coming through the combine at that given time. So five pieces of equipment, all are very vital. We got to have these before we can record yield. Well, <clears throat> without a CAN bus system, I'd have to run wires between everything. So I'd have to, well, the monitor needs to know what is the GPS location. And so it is, uh, we've got to connect a wire or a cable from the GPS to the monitor. Um, we've also got to be able to connect the, the GPS into the moisture sensor because the moisture sensor is going to say, well, here's what the moisture is, but what was the, you know, what was the GPS location when I took that moisture reading? Um, same thing is going to be true for the flow sensor. So I've got to run a cable to that. Um, I also have to run a cable between the yield monitor and the flow sensor. Um, I got to connect the flow sensor to the moisture sensor so that they know how to communicate with each other and, and that goes. Um, I got to connect the moisture sensor to the display and we can just kind of keep going on and on. We got to run a lot of cables and connect. Basically, we got to connect everything to everything. That's what it's like without a CAN bus system and you could probably realize it would be, uh, it's a wiring nightmare. And um, so that's what it is. Here's what we see with the CAN bus system is actually what I have is a module. That's kind of that black box in the center. Everything connects into that. And that is what the display is, is communicating with. So the display is communicating with that module and that module is basically saying, hey, I've got a cable with the moisture sensor. The moisture sensor is telling me this is what the moisture is. The header switch says we're down. So we need to tell the system to start recording. Um, I'm getting grain to come across the flow sensor, so, you know, how much grain is hitting that? Um, oh, by the way, here's the GPS, and it's giving me the GPS coordinates. All of that is being fed into the module, which is then feeding into the display. So, um, very basic rudimentary um, uh, diagram of this, but kind of hopefully gives you some reference for that. So, so, as I said, CAN bus uh, system, um, basically, uh, here's a display. We go in that display and basically we, you know, we can click on one little part in there and it's going to be able to tell us what is it connected to. So, you know, right now if this yield monitor was in a combine, um, but I went in there and said, and I accidentally hit the say, hey, I think I'm into planning mode, um, it's going to throw up some issues and it's going to throw up some errors for me. And you can see here, um, this is actually a planning configuration down there, what you see. And as you know, there's three modules in order for it to plant. It needs three modules. Well, two of them are there and it recognizes them. The third one, well, it says, hey, there's a planter row module here and I need 16 um, row units communicating. I'm only getting a message from 15 of them. So there's an issue there. So it's flagging me with that um, exclamation point that there's something I need to go take a look at. So... So once again, kind of a nice uh, reference of what a CAN bus system is. Here's where also or also where these display systems have really played off. So, so here's my monitor, my ag leader display. Um, take it in my tractor, um, plug in the cable. Cable's connected into my planning system, and it goes, oh, we're into planning mode. So go ahead, load up. Uh, what's the variety? You know, what's their settings for the planters? So. It automatically knows what it is. So when I go out in the field, um, my field boundaries are there. It's going to start recording all my, my spring planting information, like what variety it is, what population am I planting. Um, if I use auto steering, here's my guidance pattern. And the nice thing is that's going to be in that display. It's going to stay in that display. So I use it in the spring. Then it comes fall time, and I'm going to throw in a monitor. So, or, or here in this case, I'm going to go spray first. So I'm going to take this monitor out, put it in my spraying. Sprayer is going to record, yep, here's the product, here's the rates, here's, you know, we did a variable rate application. Here's all that information. Now I take that monitor out and I go into fall harvest and I plug it into my combine. And of course, it's going to go, oh, there's a yield monitoring system. So we're going to go into harvesting mode. So that same display now is sitting in my cab of my combine. And the nice thing is, is I could see what is my variety of corn that I planted there in the spring. Um, I can start seeing some of that other information, like my population, um, 
If I want to utilize that auto steering in my combine, I can use my same guidance pattern that I used when I planted with it um, so I can stay on task or, you know, stay on on uh, on rows with uh, stay on alignment with my rows. So so this is kind of uh, once again where it's kind of really come about. So, like I said, CAN bus systems um, communicate on a language that's kind of specific to that manufacturer. So. If it's a John Deere system, it's only going to be able to communicate with John Deere devices or ag leaders with ag leaders, trembles with trembles. So that is CAN bus. So ISO bus is the same thing, um, a little bit differently. ISO stands for International Standards Organization. And what this is, is this is a universal language. It's a universal form of communication. Um, and we can communicate between numerous things. Um, a tractor can communicate with the planter um and a variety of other things it's a universal language so i don't have to worry about um you know john deere not talking with ag leader so what we're talking about here with isobus is exactly that um, multiple manufacturers um, devices all communicating together so what i could a uh, prime example is if i have a john deere tractor newer john deere tractor it has its generation three or generation four display in the cab um, of their green star system and let's say I back up to one of the brand new Kinsey planters, their 4900 series planter. Um, that Kinsey planter has what's called an ISOBUS plug. The back of the John Deere tractor has that same ISOBUS, ISOBUS plug. So when I plug those two, when I plug that planter in that into that tractor, the tractor is going to um, do, a, in essence, a handshake agreement. It goes, oh, you're Kinsey, you're ISOBUS. Great. Send me your information of how you run. And, and it's going to display it on that screen. So, so basically, you know, any ISO bus compliant display can operate any ISO bus compliant implement. Um, so yeah, planters, sprayers, um, fertilizer spreaders, or any other type of spreaders, seeders, um, the list keeps kind of growing and growing. Um, more manufacturers are coming on board with this. So, um, the picture you see there is kind of a good representation of it. Um, that's a John Deere display in a John Deere tractor. Um, it's connected up to a horse um, seating machine. And so um, the horse seating, horse seating machine um, has its, you know, ways of how do you operate and control it. So as soon as I plugged it into the John Deere tractor, it went, oh, horse, um, isobus, great, here it is. Here's how we display on the screen. So now the operator can control that horse horse seating device um, right from the John Deere display. So didn't have to add a second display into the cab. So so once again, here's kind of this cab color, clutter thing. So if we didn't have ISO bus systems out there, here's what we'd be faced with. So I've got a display in the upper front corner of the cab um, that's recording some information. Next to that is my guidance system because that is a separate system. And then next to that is maybe it's a, something that runs the planter or maybe it's running a, the scales on the grain cart or, you know, running the fertilizer um, um, injection system. So, you know, every one of those displays has a specific function. Um, and, you know, since they're all different manufacturers, they all can't, commu they cannot communicate with each other. So, so yeah, I got one, two, three, four, five, six different displays in the in the cab, all running different things just because they can't communicate. Now, if it was ISO bus and all those devices were ISO bus, I could plug them in, and guess what? I need one display in the cab. That's it. So, ISO bus, universal protocol, everyone can communicate with everyone else. So. Here's a couple other examples. Um, Ag Leader System. Um, I can't remember the sprayer manufacturer of this, but this is, you know, instead of having that sprayer manufacturer's um, specific display in the cab, it's all being controlled from my Ag Leader System. So I can go in there, tap the button, set my rates, um, watch what's going on as, you know, um, with, with my application. Um, another example here, here is Kinsey's um, newer planters. Um, as soon as you plugged it in and went ISOBUS, great, here's and communicated, here's my information on the screen, so now you can operate it as if it was its own display. So actually when it came out, um, uh, this is a, from a flyer from Kinsey that they put out a couple years ago when they came out with their new 4900 planners. And so yeah, they said, uh, we're plug and play, we are ISOBUS compatible, and says, 
you don't need to buy another monitor. You can plug it into virtually any ISOBUS compatible display, um, including John Deere's Green Star. Um, so the picture on the right there kind of shows you that's an ISOBUS plug, and so that is an industry standard. If you're going to use ISOBUS, you have to use that plug. So um, here was the other part to that brochure. It's like, yeah, use your existing monitor with the Kinsey ISOBUS option. So didn't matter if it was a John Deere um, display or a case display, an Ag Leaders display, Trimble FMX display. Um, that's what it was capable of. The other nice thing with uh, some ISOBUS um, is now that we have cameras. Um, some, just, some of the equipment's getting large enough. We need cameras to kind of help us as we're maneuvering that equipment. So the nice thing is I can set up a camera, run the cord, plug that in the back of my display, you know, through the use of ISOBUS, there it is. So now I can get a video feed, whether it's, you know, putting one in the grain tank of the combine or at the end of the auger or, you know, in the grain cart so I can see when it's unloading into the truck. So, so that is what ISOBUS is. Um, for ISOBUS to work, um, this is where you have to get the manufacturers to come together. So um, it was actually created by, it was created by the Ag Equipment Manufacturers Group. Um, they do what's called PlugFest, and PlugFest is an annual gathering where the manufacturers come together. Um, they get together two times a year. Um, in the fall, they, in usually October time, they meet in Germany. Um, here in the U.S., it's in the springtime, they meet in Lincoln, Nebraska. And... And what they do, there's actually, um, I'll, I'll post a link, a video link out there on Blackboard where you can see a kind of a time lapse of uh, PlugFest. But basically, it's a big, large room. Um, manufacturers come, and that's where maybe John Deere comes in and sits down with Horse and says, here it is. Let's plug it in. Let's see how they communicate. And so it's a chance for the engineers to, to chat and see what works, what doesn't work, you know. And they try it out with all the other systems. So you can literally just circle around the room and... You know, try your equipment with different displays and take notes and refine it for the next uh, for the next PlugFest to come through. So, so that's what PlugFest is. Um, and so once you go through that and you meet the testing, you submit the information to the Ag Equipment Manufacturers Group. Um, they'll come back and say, yes, you're now ISO bus certified, kind of what we saw on that Kinsey um, uh, slide here uh, a little bit back. So, so that is how ISO bus co comes to be. You just can't create an ISOBUS device and just throw it out there. You've got to go through the testing and the certification. So kind of wrap up here. Where, what's going on with displays and what's what's kind of going into the future? Um, this has been one of the, um, the latest things that we've seen in displays um, is now getting displays connected. Um, a lot of times now we're getting them connected to the internet, um, out there to the cloud. And I'll give you a little example here in a little bit of how this, uh, of a good example of that. Um, and there's numerous reasons why you want to do that. Um, and here's a prime example. This came from John Deere is, um, you have a John Deere, um, display in your cab. You're having issues. So you call your John Deere technician. He's an hour away and he can't get to you. Um, he's tied up in his office, but what he can do, he can get on his, on his computer in the office. And if your display is connected to the internet, he can connect to your display and he can actually see on his screen what he sees um, on your screen. And then he can step you through, you know, so you don't have to wait for your technician to drive that hour to get to you or you have to wait for him. If he's sitting at a computer, he can get on that computer and connect into your display and then see what you're seeing and try and get you resolved and get you going a little bit quicker. So, so we're seeing a lot of displays being um, connected through the Internet, um, through the cloud. So there is one example of it. Um, here's what Trimble has. They have what's called the connected farm. Um, so here we can see there's, you know, um, sitting in an office, there's a computer. The guy at that computer can actually see, you know, what's going on and see what devices, you know, what equipment is running where. And a lot of it now we can actually see the data. So, you know, as that combine there in the center is going through and it's gathering that yield data, um, within a couple seconds of getting that yield data, that yield data, is, data map is popping up on the operator's computer back in the office. So, and then also we can see how some of these devices are connected together. So you can see how the two combines are connected together, the two tractor, the tractor and the sprayer. Um, so you can actually share your guidance lines. So if you start planting on one end of the field and someone else shows up at the other end of the field with the tractor and the planter, they can pick up your guidance um, pattern and start going. Or you could see what they're doing. 
um, see the yield as it's coming through um, so a lot of that interconnectivity going on and getting it to where someone can even pull it up on their smart device like their iPad or you know on their Android phone they can see that information in pretty much real time so that's what we have there so I'll kind of jump screens over here to give an example so um, a while back I had our uh, I had our uh, utility vehicle out and did a demonstration spraying with it it's running the newest Ag Leader display um, they're in command and that in command as long as you have an internet connection or a Wi-Fi connection that can connect to a Wi-Fi and that and what I did then is I just used my phone's hotspot so my phone was my hotspot the display is connected through my phone which is then connected to the internet so I gave this demonstration to a group of researchers um, near Ames and so gave them that demonstration and there was all my spraying information it was all recorded on the display when I got done all I had to do was I hit a button and all the information that I did when I was spraying um, the rates the amounts and you know the areas that I went all that information was was kicked up to the cloud it updated it uploaded it to the cloud automatically so I didn't have to plug a flash drive or a um, some sort of uh, computer storage device into the side of the display went up wirelessly so now it's up there on the cloud so now I'm ready to pull it down onto my computer so if I just go into read files I'm gonna go into my Agfinity account um, where that's at so now here on my computer it's connected to the Ag Leader cloud the Agfinity cloud and says yep here's the information you have up there so here's my alluvial um, spring demonstration and so yeah uh, it's been uploaded there it is I say yep that's what I want so go ahead pull it in and the other thing I'm going to show you over here so here's our data management tree so here's all of our farms and fields and if you notice we have three main farms we have the campus farm the college farm and the Hamilton campus so as soon as I hit this you're gonna see a fourth farm show up and that's the one that did the alluvial one so I hit okay it's going through it's processing the information it downloaded it there it is so now I have a new farm that showed up what's called the egg center so if I go in the egg center there's my alluvial and if I go into spraying here is my spraying map down here I'm gonna go ahead and create a new map so that you can see it so we were making some passes up and down through this little area and you can see here was the different rates that I was applying so all of this information came in automatically but also not only just that but my guidance because I was using auto steer so I can say yep here's my auto steer pattern you know for driving straight here was the boundary because when I got there that night I created a boundary and put a little bit of a waterway in there so that the sprayer would knew when it cut off so this kind of gives you an example of what we're seeing with displays um, going forward what you're gonna see a lot more the displays becoming more interconnected with the equipment um, we've seen that with John Deere so that one display not only controls the precision egg stuff but it also we can monitor the vital functions on the on the tractor or the combine and make changes to that so um, I think something else you're gonna see I've seen some drawings and I've seen some people looking at it um, the heads-up display so you won't even have a display in the cab it's gonna be displayed right in front of you on the window um, somewhat transparent so you could see through it but you could see your information so you could see what your yield was right next to you by looking out the side windows so so anyway I think that's kind of what we're gonna be seeing coming forward so so with that um, that's the end of this uh, video lecture um, for this unit and um, yeah we'll have some activities and some homework out there on blackboard so uh, head over to there and see what's to, what you need to do next so with that have a nice day